spiritual bondages passed down from one generation to another. Stay close. If you want to talk about it, let's talk. Welcome to the show. Let's talk about relationships. Let me walk you through your healing. Let's talk about that. I don't want to be nowhere where there's a move of God, but I'm not receiving. Economic side where now women are making more money than the men that they date. So many people don't know who they are before they start doing what they do. God is going to supernaturally visit you. Welcome to the show. Today we're going to be dealing with the topic, Confronting Generational Curses. I would like to read a couple of scriptures as we, as we get the show started. Exodus 34, verse 7 says, Keeping mercies for thousands, forgiving iniquity and transgressions and sin, and that will be by no means clear the guilty, visiting the iniquities of the fathers upon the children, and upon the children's children, unto the third and fourth generation. Lamentation 5 and 7 says, Our fathers have sinned and are not, and we have borne their iniquity. And lastly, Jeremiah 31, 29 through 30 says these words, In those days they shall say no more, The fathers have eaten a sour grape, and the children's teeth are set on edge. But everyone shall die for his own iniquity. Every man that eateth the sour grape his teeth shall be set on edge. Please welcome to the show, Psalmist Sandra Pratt with a selection. For every time that you protected me when I didn't know your name, Lord, I say thank you. How you loved on me and cared for me when I didn't return the same. Lord, I say thank you. How you loved on me and cared for me when I didn't love you the same, Lord. Lord, I say thank you. And I'll be thanking you and praising you for the rest of my life. Lord, I've come to realize the power, the power of your sacrifice. I appreciate all that you do. Well, how you kept your hand upon me, though, I'd have often gone astray, Lord. Lord, I say thank you. And how your spirit gently led me back to safety in your way, I want to say. Lord, I say thank you. And I'll be thanking you and praising you for the rest of my life. Lord, I've come to know the power, the loving power of your sacrifice. I appreciate all that you do. And Lord, I want to say thank you for all of my days. I want to say thank you. Lord, you are great in all your ways. I want to say thank you. Oh, I want to say thank you. Oh, for keeping me. Thank you. And I'll be thanking you and praising you for the rest, the rest of my days. Lord, I've come to realize the power of your love and your sacrifice. I appreciate all that you do. Lord, I want to say thank you. My God, come on, give God praise. <laughs> Hallelujah. What an amazing song. Amen. Thank you so much, Psalmist Pratt, for, for that awesome song. 
Well, today, listen, guys, I'm so excited that you're tuning in today. Um, we're going to be dealing with the topic confronting generational cur curses. Um, my guest is a wife, a mother, uh, a co-pastor, a motivator, an entrepreneur. She is the CEO of the Lady uh, Michelle LLC, which houses a personal ministry, Fresh Hope Foundation. Ladies and gentlemen, help me welcome to the show none other than Lady Michelle Proctor. <laughs> Lady Michelle, welcome to the show. Thank you for having me. So good that you can be here today. Listen, how long have you been in ministry? Well, I was raised in church, so I've been raised in ministry. Um, I was born in a, um, let's say, from almost within 10 weeks, I was born and raised in a ministerial home. So being in the ministry environment pretty much all of my life, under, coming into understanding what it was probably around about 14, 15, 14, 15 okay. and then really answering the call of God on my life um, around about 17, 18 okay, years well, of age. Wow. So you started preaching the gospel about 17? I started preaching the gospel when I was 13. When you was 13 years mm -hmm. old. Wow. You remember your first sermon? Yes, I do. It Ooh. was actually, they were very speech oriented. Uh -huh. And I grew up in an organization um, called Glorious Community Holiness Church. Okay. So they used to have the youth conventions. And so we go to the youth convention. Each person had to represent their particular that. church. Yeah. You remember yeah. about that yes. traditional yes. setup? Yeah. And so I would bring home the trophy every year. I What'd was looking forward to bring home oh. the trophy. Oh, wow. Didn't know what I was saying, but I realized that I had a gift to make it. <laughs> just do it. <laughs> to get the trophy every yeah. year. Just That's get the awesome. trophy. It was about bring home the trophy. So wow. we, we was confident that Sarasota was going to bring home the trophy. The trophy every year. You just dropped Sarasota right in there, didn't yeah, you? <laughs> yeah, yeah. <laughs> Listen, now, I know you, you co pastor with your, uh, your husband. Yes. The church here in Tampa, is that right? Our church is located in the Manatee County, which is okay. Bradenton, Florida. In Bradenton. Okay. Mm -hmm. Okay, tell me a little bit more about your church. Um, underneath my husband, which is Apostle Howard Proctor, mm -hmm. um, the church, um, Kingdom Life Family Christian Church, is now being in existence going into its eighth year. Oh. Um, and one of the things is, is that my husband, which has been very intram instrumental in the finishing and the developing part of my life, with making that transition from being in a very religious set right. to going over into developing a set in me in the set place of a personal relationship with the Lord. That's good. Um, and so he is an apostle, true and right. Um, our ministry is predicated and, and totally dependent on being a teaching and training ministry. His vision is to make sure that people understand the word of God, understand their place in the kingdom of God, and then launches them out in their taught gift. So he's very dependent upon Holy Ghost teachings and um, breaking the word down where people can really well grasp it so that they can carry out their mandate. Definitely not a competitive leader. He wants to see people in power to do what they're called to do. Right. So he births them into their... I owe him, yes. yes. I owe him, um, outside of my grandmother and my grandfather, uh, everything for who I am in ministry now. Um, and the teaching that he's instilled into me and the breaking and the laboring. A true man of God. If awesome. I wasn't married to him, he would still be my pastor. Awesome. That is awesome. Good, good, good. Good, good, good. You just, got, you just got back from my hometown, <laughs> Nassau, Bahamas, tearing it up. Tell us a little bit what, what went down there. <laughs> I've been hearing that a lot. This one lady said, she's like, you were the lady that came and tore up our island. I'm like, tore up. That must be a Bahamian, yeah, Bahamian thing. It tore is up. a Bahamian thing. Tore I can up. definitely say there is no place like the Bahamas. Wow. I totally love the Bahamas. I loved their hospitality. I went up on. I went there up underneath um, Doctor. I'm, I'm sorry, Prophet. His name is Prophet um, Kevin mm -hmm. and his first lady, and their their ministry there was just absolutely just wonderful. Awesome. Awesome. But what totally caught me off guard with the Bahamian culture was their hunger and desire for the Word of God. That's awesome. Um, I mean, I don't think there was one set that I didn't preach more less than three hours. They're oh, wow. thirsty for the word. Three hours? Three hours. There was one service I preached a four, four solid hours. Not one person moved. Not one person left. Not one person did anything. But was just sitting there sitting soaking up the word. word of God. Wow. Four, 
you know this set is only for one hour, right? Yes, I do realize that. <laughs> <laughs> I, I do realize that. It is definitely a cultural thing. It's it is, definitely yeah, a cultural yeah. thing. We are, we are definitely a little long with it. <laughs> <laughs> we are definitely are. Awesome. So listen, we, so today you're going to help us extra G this topic of um, um, confronting generational curses. And one of the ways I wanted to start this dialogue is to really talk about how important it is to really research what's in your generational line. How, do, how, how important it is to do that? Because I believe, especially in, the, in our culture, I don't believe that we really take the time to go back and revisit uh, you know, our previous generation to see what really came through the line. I think that one of the biggest things that the enemy has allowed um, for us as believers to, not let me not say allow, what we have allowed the enemy to do, okay. is to cause us to settle behind the scene while we preach a victory. My God. Um, there is, you have to know the tactics of the enemy. And he does not fight you once you get into the house of God with the same tools that he used on the outside of the house of God. Come on. Your mind's already made up. He knows you're in the house, house of God. Yes. But now since this is the place where you're going to be, he fights you with the hidden things that you cannot see. That's good. And if you ever want to, I know that there's so many books on um, overcoming generational curses and 10 yes. steps to breakthrough and five steps to being breaking every chain and bondage yes. and being healed in your life. I can't talk about those principles. But what I can talk about is the, per the, me, the beauty of me developing a personal relationship what? and asking God to... Show me me in a different way. Yes. And then you're able to see that some of these issues that's inside of you. And what's so funny is a lot of these issues you saw on the outside of you. Right. He would connect you to somebody uh -huh. that would show you some of your same characteristics. Yes. So that you could see how ugly it was or how distasteful it was. or So that you could see the bondage of it. Right. And what I think has happened... We don't concentrate on the hidden thing. We don't really deal with the things that's causing us to struggle in the home. Right. We just only want to deal with the extra G of scripture. Yes, yes. True. That's true, it. True, true. Talk to me about what is some good, very good points there. I don't want to, I don't want to blow that out yet because mm -hmm. I want to get a, a little deeper into the hidden things that we do, inner things that we do see. Mm -hmm. uh, and that we don't, de we really don't deal with, mm -hmm. right? And so, but before we go even, even in, in, into that level of, of details, talk to me just at a high level. What is a generational curse? Of course, I'm not going to get into a real complete definition, so that yeah. people will not make this to be a debate. Right. But a generational curse, according to like how you read in the Word of God, it is simply the fact that something that's in my lineage. Right that was given a doorway of access by the acts of my former fathers Yes. that left it unsettled and then it got passed down to me. And it continues to go on and on. Of course, like the word of God say, this and even all the way up to our third and fourth, fourth generation. generation. Yes. And it will constantly repeat itself because we don't deal with it. Right, right. So simply, I know there's a whole lot of other, you know, uh, very professional commentary that we can put as far as a generational curse. But simply put, it's something that's in my bloodline that's right. that has crept in and it's going to lie there laying dormant, affecting me now right. simply because of some, the permission that someone else gave it. Someone else gave. So it, the, the mere fact that I'm dealing with it, it was not my fault, mm -mm. but it came through the bloodline. How important it is then that we begin to... Con, um, confront generational curses in our family? It's life. It is the determination, it is the absolute determining factor whether you can have life and to have it more abundantly. That's right. We can talk about having life and having it more abundantly, but the abundant portion of it, me being able to have the life that God talked about me being able to have, is going to be predicated on my ability to labor in my own blood. It's true. Anything that is enabling us to be handicapped, to be not whole, is a part of a satanic attack. That's true. And he doesn't care how anointed we are. He doesn't care how 
talented we are Come on. or how well we can extra G in scriptures. Come on. If he can keep us afflicted from the promises of God simply because of our lack of discovery. Right. But then once we discover, we got to be willing to deal with it. And it's more than just standing in line and say, lay your hands on me in three days. It's over. I won't face it anymore. <laughs> Yeah, we have to confront it a little different. <laughs> mm -hmm, mm -hmm. That's good. Listen, there's a lot of people, I mean, when you look at, when we think about, like you were saying, the hidden things and dealing with generational curses, we, I mean, there's always a pattern behind it. We mm -hmm. can see the pattern. And, and sometimes people would be dealing with, like, let's say, for instance, an anger spirit or dealing with some type of incest or some type of behavior, I'm going to call it behavioral patterns, that they just don't know where it came from. And all of a sudden, they just, they're, 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 they're acting out a certain way. Mm -hmm. and, and, and then you hear words like, you're going to be just like your daddy. You're going to be just like your mama. How important it is as a, as, for us to begin to deal with those even comments like that? The word prophecy, um, I know in the body of Christ, we, prophecy is to foretell, if we was to put things in the proper vocabulary. Right. Prophecy is to foretell those things that are to come into the future. Right. Yeah. When we began, and word of knowledge is when I stand you up and I begin to, you know, there's a difference right. between word of knowledge and prophecy. Yes, yes. Self-fulfilled prophecies is something that people have to learn in their maturity as they mature in Christ how to deal with these things appropriately mm -hmm. so that we can make sure that we don't participate. Right. Our words are powerful. Yes. We're creative beings, and because we're creative beings, we are anointed. And when you are anointed, what you speak in the atmosphere can become a prophecy. Yes. Simply because you gave it access. You gave it permission to exist in your earth realm. Will you remember Zechariah? Zechariah was a speaking against what was already set in motion yes. to happen. The angel knew that we couldn't afford any delay. So to prevent you from speaking any further, Zechariah, we're going to silence you. Yes. Until the completion of God's word has happened, you can't say anything else. Right. So that should show us just how important it is. So the Bible says life and death lies in the, the power, power of the tongue, tongue. Yes. and they that love it shall eat the fruit therein. So when I say you're going to be just like your mama, you're going to be just like your daddy. That is really prophesying in my future. Yes. That's really putting that prophecy over oh me. God. You are identifying with the alcoholic of my father. Jesus. And you're saying, prophesying, that I will be just like that. And lo and behold, if you are anointed, you're giving access for it to exist in this earth realm. Oh my God. Because internally, I can fear being just like my father. Mm. I receive that. In two forms. I receive that as a, oh my gosh, well, I'm going to be just like my dad. Then the other thing is, my fear says, I'm going to be just like my father. So as I walk away from you, I'm no longer in your company. I'm still thinking subconsciously or consciously, I'm going to be just like my daddy. Oh my God. I'm going to be just like my father. So then the prophecy that was put out now becomes a self-fulfilled prophecy because mm -hmm. I continue to speak it and rehearse it. And the enemy keeps showing me signs on where and as I connect where it looks like <laughs> I'm going to end up Just down like, that road. My God, my God. And often, it's true, it's true, it's true. And oftentimes what it does, because those words have been released in the atmosphere and, and they're sort of following us, it's almost like it's a legal right to become it because now everybody expects me to become it. And so since everybody expects me to become what they're saying, I become what they say I should become. And so now you have a lot of people, and I want to go here, you have a lot of people who have become because of people's words. So now how, how as a church do we begin to deal with that type of, of, uh, of a generation of curse, that type of a connection you know, that was birthed out of words that was already spoken? So I become what they said I was going to become. How do I break that now off my life? It goes right back to the fact that because there is no more veil and the veil has been rent, Come on. I have the right, I have legal access to go to the throne for myself. No one has to intercede for me anymore. It, the, the best way, there ain't no 20 steps. There ain't no five steps. I can just tell people how I became free. That's good. And that is just you making a personal decision that you're going to go to God for you. 
stuff. And when you begin to go to God for you, he reveals to you who he said you was. Then you remember what everybody else Come said on. you was. And then you see, okay, well, what I've always been hearing is not what I see here or what I can feel in my spirit. Come on. And there's a difference between the mind of man and the heart of man. Yes. Yes. The heart I always I taught this series a few weeks ago. The heart never starts a war with the mind. The mind rages war against the heart, oh, yes. but the heart has to be trained to fight back. Come on. David learned that much later on in his ministry. That's the reason why he said, "Thy word have I hid in my heart that I will not sin against you." The best thing that a believer can do is move from the life of being a Christian going to a believer. And saying, Lord, I'm going to take good. you at your word. That's good. At your word. Make me whole. Search me. And whatever you find in me that should not be, take it out and then strengthen me. So then when you be, it's self-discovery. It's intimacy that leads you to self-discovery. Awesome. When you get into that self-discovery mode, mm. you got to be careful because the enemy likes to cause people to be stuck there. I'm going to keep you because when you're in that self-discovery mode, you begin to look at the memory of when they said it. Right. You begin to replay every time you heard it, how it made sense, the pain that it made you feel. Yes. You start going back down the wrong memory lane, and memory lane brings you all these kindled up emotions. Yes. And people will get stuck there, and they'll run, and they'll shut the door because it makes you feel uncomfortable. It makes you feel out of control. It makes you feel depressed, it seems. It makes you feel as if, okay, I don't have time to focus on this because I'm about to shut down. Mm. But if we can go past that stage and say, God, okay, I see all of this that's still there, that's still extremely vivid within my mind's eye, within the heart of me. Now, God, I give this to you. So then you may say, okay, well, it's, uh, they always told me, you know, a lot of times people become sexually promiscuous yes because yes. of generational of curses, curses yeah. of uh you know sexual molestation and i always like to say you know regardless somebody just didn't tell the truth it's somewhere in the line it's 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 been there it's always been there yeah. somebody just didn't tell the truth you know i want to jump in here the um and that is so important that I would imagine that if, if, if molestation or incest, let's mm -hmm, say, for mm -hmm, instance, was mm -hmm. in the line. That's right. That somebody must have known it. And, and there's this thing or there's this cliche statement that we always say, what's in the family stays, stays in, in the, the family. family. In other words, and so I believe that, do you believe that one of the reasons why maybe great-grandmother, who it may have happened to, and great-grandmother, who it may have happened to, didn't release it? Because there was a, they were trying to um, protect the family name, mm -hmm. and so they didn't want the shame and the disgrace to be associated with the name. You think that was some of the reasons why we don't expose it? I think the first reason why we don't expose is because of shame. Okay, yes. Shame connects to fear. Yes, yes. And what am I fearing? I'm fearing shame. Yes. Um, and it's embarrassing. Then if you can get past that is it's the self guilt. It's your fault. It happened because it was your fault. Right. To begin right. with. Right. You asked for it. And then it's, if you was to come forward, look what's, what's going to happen to the family all because of you. I think there's a lot of different reasons why. First of all, when you look at our culture, when you go back to the ancient days from where we came from as a people, even in the slavery ages, we were not connected with family. We didn't really have that, that mother structure and that grandmother structure. And we lived in a world back then in our culture where it was, it was norm for someone to rob you of your identity mm. and to take away from you what you thought belonged to you. Jesus. And the reality of it is most of the time that spirit comes in and takes what belongs to you before you even have knowledge exactly. as to what that is. Right, it's true. And before you, when you come into knowledge as to how valuable that is, it's already been taken away from you. When you look back at the word of God, look at Tamar, what happened to her. She was a woman of, of great um, statue. She was a king's daughter. And just one bad act, she ripped off her robe. Yes. She no longer could identify with her royalness. That's right. And it was, it, was, it was a part of her that died after that whole incident. But when you start looking at it, what happens a lot of time is that grandmama don't talk about it, mama don't talk about it, auntie don't talk about it, but it's happening. Right. We just ain't start 
uh, having these issues in the church. Come on. These, these issues have been in the church. Right. Um, but for some reason, um, we have learned to adapt to it. And you've heard even older people say, well, honey, a man's going to be a man. And, you yes, know, yes, yes. a man's going to be a man, and you just let a man yeah, be a man. And do. you just let him do what he got to do. And nah, that's unacceptable. The whole nine yards. Yes. But, you know, culture is something that can be different. Yes, you know, it's, true. it's according to how a person is raised in their home. And the values that they put value to. It's true. And how you hear it as you grow up is how you develop your own inner, your own inner culture standards. Well, going back to what happens in the family, stays Stacey. in the family. This is probably where it's going to get very controversial because my views on that is I'm not so much as to if I think exposure needs to be guarded. Yes. Okay. Um, the reason why I say I think exposure needs to be guarded is because I think that there's a lot that the body of Christ needs to play a part in people healing totally. Agreed. Not only is the person hurting that was assassinated on um, or the victim, but the victimizer is also hurting. Yes. And so many times what we'll do is we'll just lean to one side instead of looking at the curses on both, both sides. sides. Right, to bring healing. Yeah. And to bring total healing, healing to so family. that the enemy gets no place. Right. We ain't get, we're not giving you any place. That's good. That's so good. we're going to heal on both sides. But a lot of times what we do is, oh, my God, I can't believe you're such a monster. I'm going to get him. We're going to tell everybody. Yeah, we, we're going to go. Uncle so-and-so did this. Right? That spirit of vengeance comes up. Yes. That, that spirit of you must pay comes up. Yes. But we forget, though, the Bible says vengeance is mine, the saith the Lord, Lord and really he will repay. repay. Yes. We should be seeking for peace and seeking for healing totally. So I believe this. I believe that you should do what the early church said to do. If there's a problem, you ought to go to the elders in the church. The church needs to get back to the place where and as it is the one that actually takes the time to govern over these situations. And you coach people, you pray for people, you counsel people the right way through the word of God. And you, we, we believe God for healing and deliverance. And into the family. Amen. Yeah. Stay close. We'll be right back. the show. Today we've been dealing with the topic confronting generational curses with our special guest, Lady Michelle Proctor. <laughs> Just
just before the break, we begin to talk about the importance of confronting and, you know, and, and addressing it, addressing the gener whatever the curse is within the family. And one of the things you said was that we, you know, they knew, somebody knew, and it just kept passed down, just kept passing down because somebody kept it quiet, what's, what's in the family stays in the family. But I really want you to talk, take it a little deeper for me and talk about the importance that if you don't stop, this thing just continues to infest, infect the family through generation to generation to generations to come. So it, we have to confront it. We have to deal with it. The thing is, is that when we look at the word of God, we as a believer make the decision that we don't want some of the benefits. We want all the benefits all of, it, yes. of being in the kingdom of God. You make a decision that you're not willing to leave nothing on the table. And that includes everything that's supposed to be whole. I'm supposed to be whole. The, the reason why it's so important is like you look at the body of Christ. A lot of us have put a lot of focus and emphasis on prosperity. Right. Prosperity is definitely a part of the package. Yes. But we're forgetting about posterity. Yes. We got to begin to be concerned about the generations that are coming behind us. That's right. What am I doing to make sure that my existence in my right now, what is my anointing really doing? Come on. And if I'm, this is one of the things I told the Lord. I said, you know, God, okay, if I'm anointed, I need to make sure that this anointing is going to work for me. I don't want it to work for all of the world, Come all on, the nations, that's that's and it good. does not work for me. Yes. People need to know that, okay, if Michelle Proctor existed and I existed and they know that 200 years, if our world is still around, 200 years later, people need to know that my great-great-grandmother or my great-great-great-grandmother did this, this, and this right. to make sure that we would be free. And it's it good. counted. It was imputed unto us oh for righteousness sake. And that's just a revelation that the Lord gave me. So my whole thing about being anointed to build is just anointed to just bridge the gap. Anointed to even build a bridge to deliverance. That's good. That reaches back. That's but good. then not only that, I want to see I want to see my children become completely free from what I've been fighting, what their father's been fighting, That's good. what my grandmother fought, what my granddaddy fought. Great, 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 and great. Yes, I was a product of step parent abuse. My grandmother was a product of step parent abuse, mm. and my mother was a product of step parent wow. abuse. So we've allowed this to continue for at least now three generations. Mm. When you walk into that foreknowledge, you got to say, okay, wait. What is the number one thing the enemy wants to do right now? He wants to destroy my family nucleus so, your so that he can come on there you go so that he can get access to, the to Ford, repeat the on. same thing oh my god that's why we got to get to the point where we realize and not just realize but we believe that it ain't about us that's and good. when we realize it and we believe that it's not about us we're ready to go to war see we can't keep going to war with people that's in the church come on that ain't what, what good is that you know, all of my haters going to be my motivators. Who got time to focus on a hater? Not me. <laughs> they my elevators. <laughs> yeah, yeah. Who got time? You, you know, if you got time to sit back and count your haters, that shows me that you got a whole lot of unanswered. Oh, I came to mind said, come on, yes. You got a whole lot of unanswered drama going on in your household. I asked the Lord, show me. But you know what? Generational curses go beyond just sexual molestation, on, abuse, yes. and anger. It goes all the way down to the fact of not being able to budget, not being come able to on, have a good Father, balance in on. our finances, not being able to um, have the right unity. My family structure was hard when it comes down to being unified. So I have to look at that when I get up and I look at my children. And I got four, and I say I'm raising four nations. I got Three boy nations and one girl nation. Come on. And I swear my little Ariel's Deborah, honey. She's raising up to judge the nations. Come on. But <laughs> when you realize that at the end of the day, wait a minute. It's not just about me. It's not about what's comfortable to me. But no, you all can't fight. Here's why. You all cannot um, be disconnected from your brother or your sister. That's good. Here's why. And a lot of times what we did was we was always being told what not to do. 
But we weren't told, being told why what? not to do it. Come on. And good. that would have just made things a whole lot much more simplistic. Yes, yes, yes. Wow. Uh, that's amazing. That is truly, truly amazing. Good stuff, good stuff. Listen, what, one of, the, uh, one of the, the things that I want to talk about is when it is that, um, um, let's say, for instance, molestation or some type of incest or some type of perversion, occurs at the hands of a family member, how important it is to, to, for the person who it happened to, to, to um, seek, uh, what, I, what I'm trying to say is should the, two, should the two come back together, should there be a relationship that's established there? Okay, well, <laughs> here's where we, maybe where we'll get controversial. Yeah, because, hey, go ahead. <laughs> I don't necessarily agree that it has to be. Okay. And I'm not saying that it can't be. What I'm saying is that what has to happen is healing has to happen in the heart That's of right. the individual that, number one, it happened to. Right. And forgiveness needs to be taken apart as far as you, as a part of your healing. Forgiveness has to be. The reason why I said I don't believe that it has to be, because that's to say that people that went to the grave, I'm going to be held in bondage all my life. And didn't have a chance Because to, mm -hmm. I never had a chance to sit down to them, sit down with them and talk to them and hear them say, I'm sorry that I did this to you. Come I on. apologize. I was wrong. So many people are waiting for their freedom to be predicated off of what someone else will make right. My God. Some people can't make it right. That's good. But your creator is the only one that said that he would cause it to work for your good. That's right. So you don't need anybody else That's good. to make it right. I, in my life, I was molested, molested by two different individuals. Those people are dead and gone. I could walk through my life singing. Being bitter. <laughs> well, God, you know, I never got a chance to talk to Mr. So-and-so. And, you know, come on. I mean, or I could just simply say, God, it, it happened. I'm sorry that it happened. I can say that. But who, why am I sorry? It happened. I can't change that. But it's up to me to make a decision to move up. To want to move on. And it's up to me to be healed. It's up to me to be whole. And it's up to me to take on what he said in Romans 8, 28. And even after that thought, we know all things work together for your good, Michelle. It has to come together. He said that he knew it the way that I should take. He knows. he knows my beginning from my end. So all of this stuff that's happening in the middle, he already knew about it. Yeah. But if he will share with me the gospel, that's my weapon. Come on. And it, now he's waiting for somebody that's willing to just pick it up and say, okay, we knock it off. We're cutting it off. at this. The, the generational curse stops right with here, this one. Right here. But there's a, there, there is some. That's right. We talk about me, you, and I in our pre-interview. We talked about this, the fact of the root cap and busting it off so it stopped. But there's some women or there's some even men that, that may say to you, yeah, Lady Michelle, that sounds all good. Mm -hmm. Well, you were in there when it happened to me. Mm -hmm. And so right now, I want to move from the place of revenge to forgiveness, but I'm just not there right now because, number one, I was young. Number two, it wasn't my fault. Number three, it wasn't fair. And now, number four, I'm dealing with the effects of something that happened to me that wasn't even my fault. So you telling me to accept this, this gospel thing. To, to transition me from where I am. They, that's what they're saying. Help me transition from revenge now into forgiveness. How do I do that? I don't know how to do that. As a matter of fact, Lady Michelle, I don't want to do that. I want to just go buy a Minor 45 and just, just take revenge because I feel that within myself, if I hurt the person that hurt me, that makes me feel okay. And so there's a lot of people who are still sitting on the side of the fence of revenge and haven't transitioned yet into the place of forgiveness. So how do, the, how do these people make that transition? When I started writing my book that I'm releasing in November, I started doing the research on execution, um, um, people that died on death row, mm -hmm. and the families mm -hmm. that waited for their execution dates. Right. Families drove up to visit or to actually witness the execution. The execution, right. Mm -hmm. One of the ones that happened most recently that stood out to me was a family, a girl had been killed and raped mm -hmm. and her, um, her, her victimizer was being um, killed by lethal, lethal injection. Lethal. Okay. They traveled for miles. Here it is now 11 years later. Mm. And he's being now sentenced to death finally. So their, their intent for going there was to see this happen, to feel some sort to of... To get the closure. Gotcha. So 11 years you've been waiting to get the closure, predicated off of this one date, mm. when you can see him suffer. Mm. 
They got there. They witnessed him. They wanted to see what was going to be his last words. His last words was nothing to do with the incident. But what really caught them off guard is that when he felt that injection going into his system, his response was, whoo, this feels good. Oh my God. He was satisfied with the high of it. Mm. And they was completely let down because what they wanted to see, What's the that? suffering, the did irony. not happen. Wow. So now what are you going to do for the next 11 years, wait for him to be exhumed up, to see that all his bones have decayed? Mm. The whole thing is you can spend all your days desiring for someone else to suffer. But at the end of the day, when I was stuck in this place of saying, you know what? I hate everybody. I hate people. I'm mad. I'm angry. I hate my father. I hate my mother. I hate everybody. Could not even have connections with people. Could not even have a good relationship. One day from a sister act movie, I heard a saying while I was washing dishes. If you want to be somebody and if you want to go somewhere, then you wake up <laughs> you wake and up. you pay attention. Yes. The fact that I had sentenced myself into a permanent solitary confinement from the world in my own emotional prison mm. was not handicapping anybody else but me. Jesus. And eventually, eventually, I was going to be the one that would die of a terminal illness. I was going to be the one that would die of all of these heartaches oh and all of these extra, um, you know, medical issues simply because I couldn't forgive. But notice, we're always asking for forgiveness. But the Bible says, that if I want to be forgiven, I must forgive. I must forgive. Come on. So then you got to look back at this. Is the person that you're wanting to see suffer so bad, are they worth you suffering? Mm, that's good. Because you, that's, that's exactly that's where you're headed. Yes. And you got to look at them and say, no, you don't, you, you, you're not worth it. You, you, don't deserve, you don't deserve that. You don't get to, you're going, for something you did because you were unwretched and because you were uncircumcised and because you was not delivered and because you were hurting, because of what you did to me, I'm going to suffer for the rest of my days? Wow. No. This is a day that the Lord has made. I'm a child of the King. I deserve to rejoice and be glad. In come, on, come on. Come on. That's the attitude you got to have. You got to have a relentless you gotta attitude. You got to have that. As a matter of fact, I mean, God is so just. If you, if you hold in that person hostage, then the Lord can't take no, vengeance he upon can't. him. And so until, and I think a lot of people don't notice, but until you release that person, that is when the Lord now can take and put justice on them. Because he wouldn't try them twice. He would, mm -hmm. you hold on them and he hold them. He would, that would be an unfair act of him. And he wouldn't do that. Stay close. We'll be right back. <laughs>
to the show. Well, today we've been dealing with the topic confronting generational curses with Lady Michelle Proctor. Lady Michelle, just before we go into our questions as we make preparation for you to address the many <laughs> studio audience questions in the room, are you ready? <laughs> I see them brewing. You see them brewing. Right? They, they got a line in the audience. It's, it's going to be amazing, guys. This is good stuff. But just before we get into that question, I wanted to ask one final question, and that is there's some individuals who have, who have gone through um, um, some type of molestation, whatever, 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 some type of a generation occurs, right? They, they've gone through it, and now they find themselves, they're older, and what they've done, they never really dealt with it. What they've done, they've hidden it in the crevices of their heart. They, they put it in a nice little box, they put a little bowl around it, and they, put, they seal it in a safe. Can nobody get to this place? And the reason they, they've locked it is because of shame. They don't want nobody to know their secret. But inwardly, that place is still driving them. It's still controlling them. They can't move forward. But they don't want to release it because of shame. They don't want to release it because of fear. How important it is to find a safe place to release that, to release that place, to talk it out? Well, safe place. <clears throat> Controversial, probably, again. Okay. I am not an advocate of saying that we need to replace the power of God through the knowledge of clinics or um, clinics or, right, right. or um, pharmaceuticals. Um, I'm not an advocate for that. I've seen people say that that was the way that God brought them out. I can't argue with that. Okay. But as far as for me myself, coming from a place of so every issue that you can name, I've, I've been there, done that. I can tell you that the only safe place you need, I mean, if you're going to talk it out, that's fine. But if you're going to continue to just talk it out and just constantly, constantly rehearse it and rehearse it right. and rehearse it and rehearse it, healing can't come to that. You have to make a decision to be healed. Right. If nobody can say anything. You can't receive anything until you make the decision to just be healed. And that safe place, I don't care who you don't tell, but you do need to give God permission Come on. To deal with what you're hiding. That's good. Look at what happened when he came down and he seen what Adam, he had already knew about Adam and yes, Eve. Yes, he did. Yes. But Adam had his own shame. Yes. And he was hiding from the very thing that created him. That's right. That was there that could fix it and make it work for his good yet and still. Yes. And he was hiding from that. We have to give God permission. A lot of people, they talk it out with everyone else and they get a, a, a sense of peace. Let me say a sense of peace. From everyone else and they still not yet ever give it to God mm. Wow you take the pills and you still not ever give it to God oh my God you talk to your pastor and you still never give it to God my God and God knows the hidden place that's on the inside of us Wow and that's awesome. what we've got to take the time to I don't care who you don't tell make sure you do tell God awesome 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 <laughs> listen well I, I, I gotta tell you the studio audience is on fire, <laughs> and the questions are ready. Well, let's take our first questions. Please just introduce yourself and give us your question. My name is Whitney. My f question is, if you've been adopted into a family, how do you recognize their, their Potential generational <laughs> curse, and how do you know your family's generational curse? Well, I've done that, too. So... Everybody in my family on my mom's side, because of me being adopted, I am not going to know. However, the Bible says we were born in sin, and then we were shaping in iniquity. So it's therefore for me to begin to just look at what is going on in me that ain't like God. It still takes me back to that identity process. Search me. Whatever you find in me that should not be, take it completely out. Good. Then I want you to strengthen me so that it can't get back in. That's when good. God strengthens something, it becomes so hard. It is unbreakable. That's good. Fix it so nothing else can come back here. Close that door and seal it completely. So there are some parts of me that I did not know. But me sitting in that place where I had to ask God and say, Lord, show me. Okay, for instance, if you got an anger problem, you know that it's not of God. You may not know where it came from in your family, but you know you ain't supposed to be walking around every 10 seconds about ready to snap somebody's head off to the point where you can't stop unless you have physical contact. You can't stop unless you get to a whole 
thousand degrees up there. Some people literally just can't stop. They can't let it go till they get there. Well, you know, that's not of God. So since you know it's not of God, I don't know where it came from, but it's in my lineage somewhere. Show me how to show me the root of this. That's good. And the Bible says because of the Holy Ghost, he said that he would lead and guide you until all truth and righteousness. See, what we got to stop doing is just asking for God, show me my gift. Show me my gift. Show me my gift. No, God, show me what's wrong with me. That's good. That's good. <laughs> That's awesome. That is awesome. Mm -hmm. That is awesome. Next question. Hi, my name is Ariana. My question is, we always talk about the negative parts of the family and what's wrong with our family. Is there such thing as generational blessings oh, most that definitely. we never talk about? Yes. <laughs> yes. And I'm definitely an advocate for that. Hallelujah. You need to recognize the generational strengths of your family. That's good. And lean on that. Pull from that. And have the desire to maximize on that. That's good. And when you start looking at the fact that one of the great things about my family is all the way back to everybody can remember, we've all been entrepreneurs. Oh, wow. That's good. So we have a strong root of entrepreneurs. So when we have a strong root of entrepreneurs, I even found out that in my lineage, one of, um, in my lineage, one of my great, 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 great grandmothers was um, even from that particular arena, owned houses. Wow that would just, they own land and they own houses. But she also owned a, a, a department that all she did was iron clothes. Wow. She just ironed, pressed, and cleaned people's clothes. Wow. You understand what I'm yes, saying? Yes. So you do need to recognize what is the good. Another other thing is some of us are coming from a lineage where we have, where we're, we're just wise. Wisdom is a gift in our lineage. True. And you need to maximize the fact that you got the gift of wisdom. Some of us are just, the, 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 the lineage of prosperity yes. is on our family. Money is attracted to us. Witty inventions is attracted to us. And we need to maximize that because I'm anointed to prosper. And I have the access to some seeds that my lineage sold. So recompense, I call it. Everything Glory, that they didn't I get. I felt that, I felt that. I call it to me. Woo! Everything that was left <laughs> yes! on the table, yes! I call it to me. Yes, See, yes. We, 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 we too focused on the right now. I don't want just right now. I want recompense too. Come on. You know what I'm saying? Because somebody good. walked away. You know, we were supposed to get that's 40 amazing. acres in the mule, so they call it, say, so they say. <laughs> we, 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 we walked acres. away from that. Come on. You know what I'm saying? That's well, true. I got some land that's out there that belongs to me. Yes, and some money. Thank <laughs> you, Lord. I call you know, it in. I got, I got some things that belong to me. Come on. But we got to remember that, you know, I call it a, I call it a three powerful decree every day. I need prosperity, prosperity, and recompense. That's good. I'm already saved. Glory, glory. So one, now that I'm Come saved, on. moving on to perfection, I want to be perfected in all these three areas. <laughs> That's it. So there may be some things that I got to plow through right yeah, now yeah, but yeah. so that my kids can have access to it. You got to realize now the truth of the matter is a lot of people ain't going to like it when I say this, but it's the truth. Some people died in faith. That's true. Waiting. Yeah, waiting. Doesn't mean that did, they didn't have faith. Did. It was just not for them. Come on. Do you realize Ooh. that we're sitting where we're sitting at right now because of something other people believe that we could do. That's right. And that's they right. plowed the land so that we could do it. Here. Come on. So there are some things that I'm believing for right now I won't see with my eyes. But I have assurance and I have the hope, okay, Come on. that my seed will see it. Come on. And some things you're going to die in faith hoping for. My God. Awesome. 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 Next question. Good evening. My name is Carol. You've been answering all of my questions, and I just keep well, checking as you're going. Um, but one question that I have is, um, can you get generational curses through an ex-husband, through your husbands, or through relationships, you know, that soul tie relationships that once was? Can these things be transferred into your life? I don't believe that they will be transferred by way of a blood lineage, but I do believe that they'll be transferred by way of character because yes. you are a product of your environment yes. and you will pick it up and give it access to operate in your lineage. Simple as that. You know, we can, you know, sometimes, you know, we can pick up bad habits and bad habits open up the doors in our lineage and it opens up the doors to our bloodline. You know, pornography is a very nasty spirit. 
And pornography is something that rests in a, you know, it's sad, but statistically, um, out, of every, out of 10 households, pornography has visited eight of them. Wow. Out of eight of those homes, five of them are of the Christian faith. Wow. <laughs> wow. That's a strong statistic. Now, when you start looking at stuff like that, and the, what we have to be real about is that pornography is just not a male issue. Pornography is visiting females Come as on, well. Yes, yes. Well, what happens is, so let's say that the male is the one that's addicted to the pornography, but that, that access is allowed in the household. Come on. So then it is located by a child. It's located by the child, piques the curiosity by the child. I'm talking about pop-ups on the computer, DVDs that shouldn't be seen, magazines, magazines. that are left that shouldn't be seen. Come on. So then now, for, now it wasn't there before, but now it has now been introduced by way of negligence. That's and right. a lot of That's times cool. what, we, we, what we do is we just get rid of the pornography, we catch the child with it, and we just want to tell the child, no, you ain't got no business doing that. You being grown, you da 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 da, da. But you forget that once they've been introduced to something, See this planet. Come it's on. there. Yes. So now it's more than me just punishing you. Sometimes we're punishing people when we, we're reacting the wrong way. We need to address the issue. You, we need wow. to begin to talk about now the door that has been, that has been open, the feelings that they feeling, the promiscuity or the perversion. And we need to deal with it not so much from this is nasty, this is horrible, but just being real. Because you could tell me something's nasty and horrible all day, but if it feels good to me, I don't understand what you're saying. And a lot of times what we're doing... Up. is we're acting like everything that really scare us, everything that we're really afraid of, when we see it come up in our households, we automatically act out of fear. Yes. To the 10th degree. You, like, for instance, you find a note, and you are in, you're afraid that your daughter may come up with teenage pregnancy. So then what you end up doing is you see the note that she wrote to a boy, and you automatically, oh, you being fast. No, 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 you ain't finna be doing all of this in here. Not in my house. And that, okay, you found a note. She didn't say she had sex. You didn't catch her having sex. But automatically you went to the 10th degree of what your fear is. And you never deal with where she is. Talk to her. Okay, so now yeah. she's interested in the other sex. These days it's important if they're interested in the other sex. At some point you should be wanting them to say something about another sex at some point. Because if they ain't, <laughs> that's good. Now you might need to go and visit another, because that's in our lineage too. Yes, and it's in our it. culture. Yes, you know it's in our lineage. It's in our culture. So now you know you 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 need to know which side you need to go in. But you do need action is necessary. Okay. So first of all, the Bible said let's be let's give thanks in all things. All things. Let me first be thankful that you're writing a letter to the right sex. Number one. God, I praise you. Hallelujah. Thank you, Jesus. <laughs> <laughs> Sometimes we just got to do that. Oh, wow. <laughs> <laughs> but, you know, it's, it's real talk. It's real talk. That'll help you defuse all your fear. All your fear is gone. At least 90% of it. Amen. And then <laughs> <laughs> but then now, now let me start working on developing your self-esteem. Every mother should be able to evaluate the esteem of their child. That's good. <laughs> you can tell if your child is needy. You can tell if your child is scary. You can tell if your child um, is over-the-top confident, a little prideful. These are all things that we can give access to by the way of what we've just been introduced to. wasn't there before, but our culture, you know, if you have a, a, a husband and that husband was extremely cocky, well, the kids can be raised up with that real cocky attitude. Can't on. nobody tell them nothing. They know everything. Well, the Bible says that a, a fool would not listen to instruction. So you know that that's dangerous. So one of the things is, is that you began to now what we got to start doing is asking God for strategy. Show me what's wrong in this house. Show me what's wrong in this bloodline. Now, Holy Ghost, it's your job to reveal to me strategy because you the teacher and you the trainer. Now, I command you to do what you've been commanded to do. Help me through this. Awesome. 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 Amen. One more question. Um, the Bible says that some um, of the, oh, the, uh, 
through prayer and fasting, you know, you can come out of these generational. <laughs> go ahead, go ahead. You know, my question is, does all generational curses, um, you have to go through prayer and fasting, or you just have to seek God for his strategy and direction and how to become whole again? You, we look at that one scripture, and we say, these kind come out only by prayer and fasting. It was not so much of the demon that you had to fast about in order. That's the reason why it came up is because they could not cast out this one particular demon. Right, right. Mm -hmm. It wasn't so much of that. It was this type of unbelief Come on. comes out through Come on. Prayer, prayer and fasting. Whenever, the, whenever Christ laid, let me paraphrase for a little bit. Whenever Christ laid something real heavy on the disciples, the disciples would be, Lord, help us with our unbelief. Oh, well. <laughs> <laughs> you telling me to forgive somebody 70 times, seven, seven in a day. Come okay, on. in one day, I'm supposed to let her keep doing this to me? Lord, help us with our unbelief. unbelief. So what you realize is that I, I'm a, my husband, my apostle proctor, has so faithfully taught us the word of God. You can fast until the cows come home and they start talking to you if you want to. At the end of the day, you got to make a decision to stand on that word. Come on. You got to make a decision to believe what that come word on. says and cast down every thought, every vain imagination that would exalt itself against the word of God. And after your obedience has been fulfilled, stand on the promises. So I can fast, but when I'm fasting, I need to make sure that I, I know that I'm fasting to release the yoke of unbelief in my life so that I can agree with that word. The word works. My God. I'm fasting to give me the belief to be able to stand on that word. Come on. I'm not fasting for God to release a new thing in the earth. He already done, done everything. Come on. Come he, already, on. He, said, and he said, I'd have already blessed you with everything that pertaineth unto life and godliness. Yes. Everything you need, he already done released it. He already gave it to you. When you fast and when you see a stronghold in your household, you fasting, Lord, show me, and he show you. Now, God, give me the belief. Show me the word of God regarding this, and then give me Jesus. the belief to know that I can do this. Holy Ghost is there for you. A lot of times we, really got to, we don't have to really fast for the Holy Ghost to do something. We just need to fast that we can believe that he's doing it. He's doing it. That's awesome. Come on, celebrate. <laughs> wow. This has been an amazing show. Come on, celebrate the ministry gift one more time. Give God praise for her. Amen. Thank you. Thank you so much, um, Lady Michelle, for just dropping by the studio and just, and just pouring out the wisdom that is flowing out of you. And I got to cut you loose here for a few minutes because we do have a few minutes. And I want to just cut you loose for real in the studio. I want you to look into that camera. And I just want you to just begin to prophetically flow. Begin to prophetically flow how I feel God here already. However the Lord will lead you. Because there's a lot of people that will, that will be watching this show that is struggling with generational curses, that are struggling with issues in their life, undealt with, unconfronted issues. And they just, they just in a place where they want, they want to get out, but they don't know how to get out. And I believe that you can release a sound in this, in this room that can help break chains. I believe you can release a word that will cause lives to be transformed and deliver it right now in the name of Jesus. Go, go, go. Listen, the first thing I want to just begin to tell you is that you must know without a shadow of a doubt that God, when he said that he died, when Jesus Christ came, he said that he died, that you may have life and to have it more abundantly. There's many people that are out there right now. You're not living the abundant life simply because it's, I don't care how much, I don't care what you're driving. I don't care how much money you have in your bank account. The fact of the matter is, is that when you go home and you turn off all the lights and there's no one there, it's what the struggle is that's still in your mind. It's the struggle that's still laying down on your pillow top with you at nighttime. A lot of times they made this, they made this very popular movie talking about sleeping with the enemy. The reality of it is for every moment that this enemy has been showing you and crippling you with these thoughts. You're sleeping with the enemy. I rebuke that spirit right now in the name, in of, the Jesus. name of Jesus yes. and allow the spirit of the Lord. I speak that the spirit of the Lord can begin to come to your mindset and begin to prick your heart with this gospel and prick your heart with this word of God regarding forgiveness. Jesus. It ain't worth it. Let them go so that you can have everything that God always promised you. Everything that your family left 
that and did not pick up. I call recompense to come to you now with just your act of faith on forgiveness that you will begin to receive the abundant life that you deserve. Your assassinators don't deserve to walk around with your life in their hands. You deserve to live your life that That's God said God. that you can have. It's yours. I call for every Samson to get up. I call for every Saul to be ejected out of the hearts of a man. But I thank you, God, now that in the name of Jesus, that every Joshua can begin to stand up and be what God has called him to be. Every man can begin to say, I, I forgive my mother. I forgive my grandmother. I forgive who did it, my daddy. I'm my free. God. from the, the yes. attributes. I'm free from the character flaws. I'm free from the hindrances that has Jesus. been plaguing me all these days. I'm free from it. And I decree and declare that this is the day that you will begin to walk up and see the sun in a new way. See the sky in a new way. Every daughter of Sarah, every daughter of oh Abraham, God. every daughter of the royal, the royal king, we speak to you now that you will begin to see how beautiful you are. You were created and fearfully and wonderfully made. And because of who you are, the world is waiting on you to acknowledge what God said about you. I don't care what everybody else said. I want you to start focusing on what did God say. God said I was fearfully, I was wonderfully made. I don't care who called you ugly. I don't care who said you would never be good for nothing. I just need you to know that God never made no junk. And because you are here means that he has a purpose for you. I speak that you would begin to walk in your purpose and your destiny. Why? Because it's yours. If he didn't mean for you to have it, he would have never allowed you to win the race at birth. You're here now, baby. This is your day. It's time for you to live. And it's time for you to have the abundance of life. I don't want you to just just have abundance right now. I want you to get abundance in recompense. I want you to get abundance in prosperity. And I want you to get abundance in prosperity. It is your season. It is your time. And you are the one that can control when the clock stops. And you're the one that control when the clock starts. Start the clock now in faith. We speak it right now in Jesus name. That everybody up underneath the sound of my voice, every chain, every hidden issue, every steps, every subtle spirit yes. that has been hidden yes. so that people cannot see it. I call it to the forefront now. Jesus. I call the spirit of exposure to happen my in a God. real way. Yes. The spirit of exposure to happen in the safety yes. of intimacy. That the Holy Ghost can rest, rule, and abide. Yes, Set the God. captives yes. free. Yes. Oh yes. God, and yes. loose the bands from your people. Loose yes. it from the hearts of your people. In the matchless name of Jesus. You are God and God all by yourself. All you need is the permission of us to say, Jesus. God, come into our heart. Lord, have your way in my life. Do what you need Jesus. to do. I desire oh to be whole. God. I desire to be completely free from bondage. Oh, oh I am decide to come up out of this, yes, but I want everything yes, to come yes. up out of me. Lord, yes. take it out at the yes. root. Take yes. out of every Father. bad, self-fulfilled prophecy. Up out of me, up from around me. Yes. I prophesy against every satanic attack. I in come against every a satanic word. Oh, devil, you tried yes. to confuse Hallelujah. my purpose. You tried to steal away identities, but we cancel the stolen identity right now. In, in the, the name, name of Jesus, Jesus we flip the switch on today. We flip the, flip the switch on tonight that everybody will begin to see the womb of purpose, oh see God, the womb oh of prosperity, see yes. the womb of promises, God. You said that if you be lifted up, you would draw all men unto you. God, we lift you up now. Every daughter can come forth. Hey, God. My God, ever a son can come forth. Yes. Come forth. Oh, my God. Can these bones Jesus. live? Yes, they can. And the oh, Bible Jesus. said you prophesied to them. I want you to start going in and start talking about only what God said about you. Jesus. Let everybody else go in Jesus' name. Hallelujah. Glory. Hallelujah. Amen. Amen. All over this. Uh, I'm about to say sanctuary. It is a sanctuary. Somebody just shout hallelujah. Come on. Hallelujah. Come on and shout hallelujah. hallelujah. My God. We, we believe it. We believe it. We believe that it is done in Jesus' name. Amen. 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 Just before Amen. I close, uh, uh, Lady Proctor, I know you're about to release a book. I don't know if you want to give a little, a little insight into this anointed to build concept that the Lord has blessed you with. The anointed to build concept is, is a revelation that the Lord gave me, which the fact is, is that I am anointed. And when you are anointed, that means that you have the competitive edge. 
you have the tools, the resources necessary to overcome every challenge. That's awesome. There's no such thing as defeat because you're anointed. And there's no such thing as competition because you have the edge. Come on. There's no such thing as you not having options because you are anointed to have them. Wow. Not only are you anointed to have them, you're anointed to exercise them. Everything that you touch because you are anointed has to work. That's good. So with that being said, I told the Lord I just didn't want my anointed to work in the sanctuary. But I needed it to have the revelated anointing to work in every area of my life. Awesome. Matter of fact, I want the anointing to work in every area that matter the most. My God. I want to be anointed. The anointing allows you to see the generational curses. The anointing allows you to deal with them. That's good. The anointing gives you the edge to close the door. My the anointing God. is there to help show you how to budget, overcome whatever the curse is in your home. And let's be real. We got some issues in our houses that shouldn't be there. Right. And it's time. The Bible says a wise woman built her house, Proverbs 14 and 1. Yep. But a foolish one plucked it down with her own hands. All God needed to do was let me see that there was revelation that I had legal rights to build my house. That meant that some things I had to come in through the demolition. And I'm still in the demolition stage. That's, That's the reason why I'm not rushing this book. Because I'm in the demolition stage. There's some things we built that got to be tore down. That's good. And so when you go in and you start tearing them down, then you realize there's some things you got to saw through. You got to put some elbow grease in it and yes. to, and before you can get back to construction. But you got to clear the land. So it's a process into doing that. But regardless, the enemy will come in and try to make you feel like you're overwhelmed and it's too much. No, I'm anointed for this. That's There's good. no such thing as me being overwhelmed. That's awesome. That's awesome. That's awesome. So the book is scheduled to release when? My birthday, November 2000, November 4th, weekend, 2013. Awesome. I'm having a birthday release party. Awesome, 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 awesome. Well, you know what? I will, I, you, are, you are coming back, and I'm asking for the exclusive <laughs> for the book release. Amen? Somebody say, I'm getting the exclusive <laughs> for the book release. Yes, amen, yes, amen, yes. amen. God bless you. Amen. Amen. Thank you so much for tuning into today's program. And until next time, always put God first, and all else will follow. Bye now. Thank you for watching today's show. If you'd like to request a copy of today's show, please contact us at 813-971-5372. We would love to hear from you. Please drop us a line at Let's Talk Show at Verizon.net or subscribe to our Facebook page and leave a comment. If you feel this show has been a blessing to you and would like to assist us in keeping the show on the air, you can make a donation via PayPal or mail your checks to the address shown on the screen. Please tune into next week's show. And as always, if you want to talk about it, let's talk.